Attack! Exclamation point. Fast, easy to play, basic rules. We're just playing with the basic game. No expansion, no attack deluxe, just old school. We've never played this game before. It is Fenny Rob versus, of course, Evil Jeff. He could not not play this game. And Zuper John, who is completely confused, but will probably win through mathematics <laughs> and engineering. Yeah. Are we going to attack each other in this game, <laughs> Fenny Rob? I don't know. This might be a, a darn lie. All right. I'm going to kind of explain how the game works. And I'm sure I'm going to mess some things up, but we're, we're all we're working our way through this. I've read the rules. Jess read the rules. We watched the harsh rules. I'll put a link to that in the description below. The goal of the game is to have the most territories when the game ends. We're going to choose the timed variant. We're going to set a timer once we start the game for two hours. At the end of two hours, when the alarm goes off, we'll finish out equal turns for, for that round, and then the game will end. Whoever has the most territories at that point will win the game. If within that two hours, one of us is eliminated from the game, meaning we have no more pieces on the board, then that will trigger the end game if it's before two hours. And then whoever the remaining players are, whoever has the most territories wins. The tiebreaker is units after that. And after that, we'll figure out knife fight something to figure out a winner if it comes to that. We are going to be doing three actions per turn. And those actions are going to include move, and a Blitzkrieg move, which can only be done if you've moved on that turn. Strategic move, naval battle, diplomatic blitz, build new units, trade. First of all, we're going to start with trade because that's going to be the easiest. We have these economic cards. Those are mine. To start the game. They're going to dictate how many units we're allowed to build, which is another action. On your turn, if you want, you can declare that you are trading. That's one of your actions. And then you can trade with as many players as you want. It's You can promise things. You can do whatever you like in that regard. I don't think you need to keep your promise if you want to lie and say, hey, I promise I won't attack you next turn if you'll give me one of your cards. And then I lie. Then you'll never trade with me again. So if you declare you want to trade and no trades are made, is that the... Hey, too bad, you lost a turn. No, a trade only counts as an action if a trade is made. Discussing what you're doing does not count as, negotiating doesn't count as the trade action. So it's only if a, if a card is exchanged. During a trade, you may not trade any units back and forth. Okay, got that? Building, pretty easy. We have a chart, everybody's got it. It talks about the cost of building. So with these economic cards, they have numbers on them. Uh, there are four different kinds of actual resources and then a fifth one of population. Populations only have ones. The rest of them have numbers between one and four. And you're just gonna add up the numbers on those and that gives you your pool for building. You don't have to trade the cards in. You just show the amount that you're spending and then you build units. You may put units anywhere you have units already. You can put them all in one spot, you can split them up however you like, it doesn't matter. Any questions there? We'll go over these as we go through the game some more obviously. No, sir. All right, then we've got a Diplomatic Blitz. So what's gonna happen is once we start playing, we're gonna put all of our pieces out. We start with 24 pieces, you'll see how that works. But once they're out there, for instance, if I control this area, I can either move into a neutral area. Now, I will point out, when you move, you have to, like risk, you have to leave one unit behind. Always. You cannot abandon willingly something you already control. Okay. Got it? Mm -hmm. So if I only had one unit there, I couldn't move out. But if I had to and I wanted to move in here, then... I could either move, I would draw an economic card. Every economic card at the bottom of it has something like a number of infantry and artillery and sometimes uh, a tank, but no planes. You will have to fight against them 
as a, a battle. That's one way to get it. If you, if you defeat them, you get the economic card. If you don't want to fight, you can do what's called a diplomatic blitz. This is the only action that you can take all three times on your turn. And what that means is I can, I can pick either an adjacent territory or I can pick any, em any empty territory on the board and do a diplomatic blitz, which is me basically trying to issue propaganda to get them to join me. The way that works is you are going to pick the spot and you're gonna roll two six-sided dice, the numbered dice. If the, if the place is adjacent to where you're uh, starting from, then all you have to roll is an eight and you get the card. If it's anywhere else, you gotta roll a nine or higher. Here's the thing though, if you get it, you get the economic card. If you fail, then in clockwise order, everyone else gets the chance. There's some question on Board Game Geek about whether you have to or you're not. I think it's a may. Seems to me it's a may. So you can, if you want, try a diplomatic blitz of your own. And you have to roll a nine, no matter where it is on the board. And if you don't want to do it or you fail, then you can try. Do you place a uh, unit there? Yes. And anyone, including the active player, if it's my turn and I want to do this, I don't actually have to move into there. I say I'm going to do the diplomatic blitz. If I'm successful, I take one out of my supply. Reserve, reserve yeah. supply. Okay. Same thing for you guys. So here's the thing. The reason why some people do it as a mandatory is you might, I might be going for something that's far across the board. Mm -hmm. You only get to put one unit in there. On the next turn, if you get attacked and you lose that place, Take you, a card. You, someone can take an economic yeah. card from you. And that might be bad. You might you might have gotten a one population and then lose a four oil, and that might not be what you want to do. So you're not forced to, and it makes sense. You wouldn't be forced to issue your own propaganda. You can step in if you like. So if you're taking the um, diplomatic approach, is an economic card revealed after the roll attempt? In other words, would anybody know before they decide to yes i believe do it, so. that, that they know what they're going for all right you do not reveal the economic card until after it's success someone has a success so you don't know what you're getting that's right okay. so you can decide whether you want to or not makes sense and then you keep it private right so you're when you drawn. build something you can build it into any territory you have you own yeah you already have units yep so like if you if, you failed on something and then I diplomatic blitz and won and got something there, then my next turn I could build a bunch of units you there. Add. You if I so desire. Yeah, sure. That is correct. Okay, and you can do that up to three times on your turn, diplomatic blitz. Okay. I'm assuming there's gonna be some sort of land grab early in the game. Sure. <laughs> and so you gotta decide whether you want to attack and get it or you want to try the blitz because you, you have to roll an eight if they're adjacent. That's yeah. pretty tough. Yeah. So tell me how attacking works. All right. Well, the first thing you do is you have to move in, into an attack. And you do all of the movement first. Then you resolve the battles after movement is done. And again, when you move, you can't abandon the territory. So let's say here you moved your, your troop into Brazil. All right. And you okay, now it's war. Right. So I would flip over an, an economic card and... It would be four infantry and two artillery. Now, the way the rules state is, whoever has a greater stake, meaning the person who wants me to lose the most, and you can decide between you. If you can't decide, you roll off to see who it is that gets, <laughs> to, fight gets, to, fight gets to fight me. gets to fight me. Because the neutral body, yeah. you get to make more decisions than, than just rolling. Uh -huh. So... Uh, it would be four infantry and two artillery. You could take them out of your own reserves. I've actually given us some neutrals here to pull from. And uh, then you, you have a fight. There is no retreating from battle. Once a fight starts, it's a fight to the death. Right. Okay? And the way it works is it goes in rounds. So let's go ahead and do an example real quick. So put... Um, let's, let's go with some artillery and some tanks and planes so I can show you how they all work. All right, uh, in the first round of battle, the way it works is the attacker will, you put all of the pieces that were from that spot are in play.
But the first round of battle, only four slots are available in the front line. As the attacker, you must pick the four you wish to put out there first. So let's say I put those four out. Now Jeff can decide from his eight there which four he up to four he wishes to put in there. So we got an equal amount there. All right, so, uh, so let's say start. we do it this way. What we do is we take these red dice and it goes, the defender actually goes through the steps first. So, so the way it works is in, in the first round, you wouldn't reinforce, but normally that's what happens. You reinforce, meaning you refill the ranks. Yeah. Now, in the second round of battle, there's five slots. In the third round of battle, there's six slots, and it just keeps getting more and more and more. But you, you, you only have to have one unit for sure. So, pause here for a second. So what? When you move into Brazil, you're only moving in with one person, so that's the only person who would fight. It's what, what you move into a territory is what you fight with? Yes. So if you were, like for this battle, you would have had to move four people into a territory where that's you right. had all eight of these. And yes. you could have moved them from separate territories because the battle's not going to happen until all movement's over. But once they're in there, that's what you have. So we would roll one die for each unit, except tanks get to roll two dice. Jeff, as the defender in this, would roll first. So just go ahead and roll the dice. You look at the dice and... Oh, that's terrible. Let's, let's, uh, let's try that again. There we go. All right, there we go. Something. So you look at the dice and what wow. you do is you match up the matching symbols with the units that you had in there. So right now he has no planes and one tank. So his tank causes one hit against the attacker and that's it. The rest are misses for the purposes of that attack. I have to remove infantry first. You have to remove infantry first. Once all infantry is gone, then tanks, then artillery. I thought artillery, then tanks. No. Infantry, tanks, then artillery, then, then planes. planes. Okay. All right. All right. Got it. Um, so that would be his. So, so he rolled this and he basically got one hit. The, because this matches up with one of his, it gets a hit, so you have to take away. So yeah. this guy is gone. Okay. All right. If I were to, you know, if any any dice that I roll that match anything in the front row is a hit. So defender basically takes first shot. Yes. So okay. yeah. now, now he does that, that he happened. rolls, you determine the number of hits, and then you eliminate units. So that's what we did. Now I go through the same steps again. So here... So it's for your first round, do you get to reinforce now, or...? Yes. The, the, the attacker now would get to move in to reinforce. Are all these, all these the same? They are. Yes, they are. Uh, so then <clears throat> I would do the same thing. I would roll one, two, three, four, five, because I have the tank and I roll those. I have one plane and one artillery. So here's the thing that we're going to play with. I think this is gonna be the way we're gonna do it. One of the expansion rules I understand is that artillery actually counts as two hits when you succeed. Mm. Tanks, you get to roll two dice, artillery but artillery, if you get one hit per dice. unit of artillery you have, it causes two hits on the opponent. I think we should do that. I think that'll speed the game and make it a little yeah. more exciting. What do you yeah. think about that vote? Yep. Uh, right. The artillery costs you eight to build as opposed to infantry, so otherwise there'd be no reason to build artillery, right? Right. I think that yeah, that's kind yeah. of and, and and Glenn Drover stated on Board Game Geek that he did he just wanted to keep these rules as simple as possible right. and made some statement that most people who are on Board Game Geek probably want to play with expanded rules when yeah. they're there. So I think we're gonna we should do it that way. All right. So then he would have to take these two away. So you get three total hits there. Well, three hits. So he right, takes right, two away. And, and then... must be the tank next. Yeah, now tanks, do they take no. two hits? Nope. Or no, they just roll two dice. That's it's right. Just a hit. Okay. There, nothing takes more than one hit gotcha. for, for Except land the units. Show. Got right, it. land units, none of them do. Okay. Um, so then he would then reinforce, and he has to On now. My turn. Now yeah. he could elect not to put any in there. But it would, he could put up to six. I'm sorry. No, no, five. Five. Now. Right, right, yeah. five, because that was still the first round. Yeah, now um, we're in the second round, it goes to five. If he decided to just leave that one there, he'd still roll two dice. You can't roll less than two dice as the, as the um, when when you fight. So when you're, when you're attacking, though, you only hit his front line. 
Yes. So a decision like that would be, hey, I'm going to make it harder for you to hit me, to take me out, but I'm going to get two dice every time. You're only so. going to get two dice, though. Right, but even if you rolled two artillery hits, he'd only get one because he only has one unit. So there's you, some... You, got, you, you gotta, can only match one die with one unit, no matter what. Right. right. They also suggest in the rules that you probably want to diversify your armies as much as you can because each die face then would... So, would have a better chance so of the way the right. die break down is everything's got one on there except for the airplane appears twice and then there's a blank for missing matches. all right so that's the, basically how how it works at the end of the battle the the player that moved in will either be eliminated completely or will have whatever units they moved in will remain yeah, right. then that person would be able if i won that battle and he had any cards left if he has no cards there's nothing I can't I don't get a card, um, but I do have a territory counting towards winning. So that that's land battles. Mm. Understood. Got yeah. it. Yep. All right. So he would shuffle up his cards because you took his territory, and you would take one of his cards randomly. randomly. That's correct. Oh, Blitzkrieg move. Let's talk about that because that's related to movement. Blitzkrieg move still counts as an action if you wish to use it. But here's the thing: we talked about you can only do one action one time except for the diplomatic blitz. If you move your units, you may then spend a second action after all battles are fought, if there are any, and for for a uh, Blitzkrieg move, which means any planes or tanks you have mm -hmm. can move again. Which normally can move two. Yeah, they can yeah. move they can move their their full amount. Okay. Just like they could again, but only planes and tanks, and they can't make amphibious moves, which would be moving across sea lanes. And we're not going to talk about sea lanes here. We, they'll see how those work while we're playing. So after let's say after this battle, this is what you had left. You could take these two these two into another territory for an additional right, two movement for one action mm -hmm. extra. Yeah, that's your second action. Right. Which and, but you have to spend too. an action. It's not just a free action. Right. It, you right. have to spend an action to do it. But that's the only way you can move after you've already moved. Now, there's another move called a strategic move. So there is a way that you could move a plane or a tank three times on the same turn. You'd have to use those three actions. It would be strategic move, move, and then a blitzkrieg move because... What a strategic move is, I want to move my units. Basically, it's a reinforcement. So if the board looked like this and I wanted to consolidate my forces, I could call a strategic move and I can move these. Well, you could do that because you'd be leaving people behind. Right, right. Uh, you're right. You're right. You see, you are paying attention. Well done. <laughs> but yes, so let's say I wanted to do that and I want to move these guys up here. And then I want to move them actually all the way over to, well, let's say I was in Nigeria and there's a sea land and I wanted to move here. I could actually do that, but... Because you control all those territories. But if another player controlled the sea, they could prevent me from, from, yeah. from doing that. Okay? Movement across water can be blocked by the player who controls the seas. And no battles may result from a strategic move. Because you're going to land in your own space. You have to start and stop in your own, and they all have to be connected. That's right. Yeah. All right. So that's so I could do that, and then on my turn, I could move. I could attack that place, and if I, if I were successful, then I could Blitzkrieg move, you know, sure. one, two. Okay. That would all be... But that would be my whole turn because that was strategic move, move, and blitzkrieg move. And my, okay. my turn would be over. Got it? Yep. Okay. And then uh, the only other thing is the naval battles. We talked about trade. We talked about building units, diplomatic blitz, which you can do all as many times as you like, up to three. Naval battles, strategic move, blitzkrieg move. All right. So naval battles. We, we've mentioned controlling the sea. So let's talk about that for a second. There are sea lanes, these gray lines. There's some that go off the board. That's for the expansion, and we're not using those. But if I wanted to move from Brazil to Nigeria, I could do that as long as the person who controlled the seas allowed me to. If it was me, no problem. If it's one of you guys, you might say, mm -mm, no, I don't want to do that. Traditionally, it's Poseidon, though, right? 
Right, you're Poseidon if you control the seas. Only one player can have control of the sea. The player with control places his navy cards in the middle of the board. If you're the first player to choose the action naval battle, you gain control of the sea. So it is an action to claim it the first time. Okay. It won't be a fight, but you just claim it. But okay. it is an action. After that, you control it for the rest of the game until someone chooses naval battle. When they do, what will happen is they will put their cards out too, you know, like, hey, I'm going to fight you. Yep. All right? And Let's what do we it. do is, uh, so I'll, I'll take these off the board. You could back down. And if you back down, now I control the seas. It's still an action, but I control the seas. Otherwise, what we do is we take, four, we, we take all of our Navy cards, all of them, up to eight. Maximum is eight that you can put out in one round, but you must put all that you have up to eight. And we line them up across from each other. So this is our starting navy oh, that we have in our hand? I thought it was um, Nope, all of them three? up to eight. Yeah. All of them. So you put them out and you these, line them up. they're all lined up. So I'm the attacker, this is gonna be one. Okay, now we flip them up. And you can choose however you want. I just randomly picked these. I didn't look. Yeah. All right. And this is going to be in general. There's one other ship that's not out here, and that's the aircraft carrier. Each ship says on it what it, what benefits it gives. So right here we have, we're going to go right down the line and fight. When you lose units in a fight, almost always, except with the exception of the aircraft carrier, if they happen to be matched up with each other, well, you'll always lose the ship closest to the front of your line. So if I win and knock down three of his ships and he wins that battle, this is the one that takes the hit. You always lose the, the f first the one first in line okay. until it's gone, then you move. So we would have this fight happening. It's destroyer versus submarine. This is plus two versus submarine, and that's plus two versus battleship. So you get no benefit. No benefit. So we each roll the blue dice, and then we add the modifier, if any. So I got a seven. We both got seven, but I get the plus two. So, so submarine is gone. It's dead. So that's out of his hand. It's forever. out of his head. It is it, out of, Yeah, it is dead. Uh, now we move on to the next row, and we do the same thing. This time, battleship gets plus two versus a destroyer, and it also takes two hits to sink a battleship. So we roll, I got All a right. 10, you took a hit. I so now you're hit. gonna turn that sideways, and it stays just like it is. Now, if I score a hit here, because I kill a battleship. battleship. So we got the submarine. Oh, you don't attack again here. No, we attack here, here, but you take damage here. from that way okay. down. So submarine versus a battleship, there's no, you get a plus two. Because it's a destroyer. Nine. Right. I'm getting all my good rolls out in right, practice. I, know. I, I, I wanted uh, that to happen. I would win. So the battleship is gone. Then we go with the submarine. Um, this battle, yeah, it's done. Yeah. So now we go submarine ahead. versus submarine. I got a ten. Nine. So your sub. So your destroyer's gone. Oh, that's right. Destroyer's gone. That's three. Or we go all the way. We to go the all end. the way down to the end. Destroyer, battleship. I get a plus two. So I would kill. The submarine. I think that's exactly how it works. I'm going to check that to be sure. So he's got one left. Does it go back to the start? No. Now that's the end of the round. Okay. Now we pick up all of our cards. If All of them. Right. If, if I had five and you had three um, to start the battle, I wouldn't get to hit you five to your three. You only do the three. Then you pick up all the cards that are still around. Now your battleship, if it had survived the round... Mm -hmm. You get to keep it in your hand, but it cannot fight anymore in this battle. It, it basically goes back to your reserve, not to fight this battle. If you took a hit. Right, and then the next time it, you, you fought a brand new battle with someone else, it would be fresh again. But for right now, I would pick up all of these, and you would okay. pick up all of those, but and you, you know get he's to got decide. You know he's got a destroyer. Right, but you would get to decide right then, do you want to keep going? You, could, you can retreat from a naval battle. Uh, no, let's keep going. <laughs> well, we're not going to do it. Let's see how it works. At that point, if you didn't retreat, 
and I won, I, I would control the seas now. Okay. And what yeah. happens to these cards then? The ones you lose are out. They go back and you got to build them. Again. You have to rebuild. Yep. Rebuild your arm. Got to rebuild them. In the Navy. Okay. Yeah. So with naval battles, um, okay. the only exception is going to be with aircraft carriers. Uh -huh. They give bonuses for, for, for being next to other ships. Okay. And they, when they're matched up against each other, they will, they will both take the, they will take the hits in that battle. It's the exception to the first in line rule. Aircraft mm. carriers, when they just happen to be matched up in the same line, will hurt each other. Okay. okay. So both players swimming? place their navy cards down. Cards are turned up, face up. Each matchup is resolved one at a time. For each matchup, both players roll the dice. We did that. The hit is immediately applied to the wow. losing player's ship that is currently at the beginning of the battle line. So that I was correct. Okay. You always take the penalty at the front. If the ship that hit uh, da, 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 if the ship is a battleship, it can sustain two hits before being sunk. So it still remains in, in that round. So like I did in, in the example, I took it out. Yeah. If it had survived the round, it would it would basically be screened. For the rest, for the rest of the battle, of the battle, never if, to if come we continue back. to fight unless right. we retreated. Yeah. That's right. Okay. okay. Any right. questions there? Nope. Any questions, John? Yeah. So sometimes uh, when I pee, it burns a little bit. Should I see a doctor or? Yes. Yes, you should. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to hold this up here just to show you that this might be the end of a video. Uh, I may make this a separate video and then also make it available at the beginning of our playthrough, which we're about to do now. So if you are not looking at the playthrough and you're just looking at the overview, look for the playthrough. I'll put a link up here. Otherwise, we're going to start a game of attack. Yes, indeed. Buckle those uh, submarine seat belts, gentlemen. Right. While you're here, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Yes. So, John, um, what are you drinking? Uh, I have here a little uh, Coca-Cola name brand with some Noble Oak bourbon and a little bit of Fiddler whiskey. Mmm. Mm. Interesting. Nice combination. Give, give a little smoky flavor with the, with, the, with the drink. This is the kind of discussions that go on when I'm looking up rules <laughs> off camera and edit them out, but I'll probably leave that in.